Good morning all. Time to open some post. And uh, this one says adapter, but I think it's a chip. <laughs> That's so blunt. I must snap the end off, but they never snap square, do they? They never snap along these lines. They always, because it's cheap. That's a Stanley one though, I think. Or maybe it's just Stanley colours. Um, yes, it's a chip. What chip is it? Well, they've gone to uh, some trouble to package it nicely. Now, of course, that's stuck to the tape on this end. Okay, let's have a look. Well, it's an SC2272-L6. Do you recognise that number? Uh, this chip is this. It's a remote control decoder paired with the SC2262. Um, it's also compatible with the PT2272, which is the Princeton Tech version. Um, let's just get the data sheet for that, actually. So here's the Princeton uh, Technology Corp data sheet for the PT2272. Um, this is presumably the original one because they don't mention that it's compatible with the SC2272. They do. Um, and the applications are car security systems, garage, door controller, remote control, fans, toys, and all that sort of thing. Let's look at a circuit board which uses one of these chips. So here it is. Um, this is a wireless, as you can see from the little wireless module with the little antenna there, a wireless receiving module with six relays. And I've put six bulbs on here and I've also wired um, from the power input a sort of daisy chain of power down to these relays because these relay contacts uh, were just sort of dumb connections into the uh, normally open, normally closed and common. So I've actually done a sort of power distribution to these six bulbs so that we can see how it works. So let's plug in my solar power system, 13.4 volts uh, at the moment. Yeah, we've got a red light, so that's powered up. Where's the remote control transmitter? Right, here it is. This is a six channel one, uh, 315 megahertz, I think, which I believe is uh, legal for use in the UK. I'm not sure that the 400 and whatever it is, 33, is it megahertz one is, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. It's very retro and old school. It's got an extendable antenna, but um, let's try it. Channel one, which interestingly is there. Two, three, four, and then five and six are there and backwards. That's really quite interesting. But uh, notice that there's no way to latch these um, relays. They're only on for as long as I'm holding the button. You can press two together, which does interesting things. I think if you press one and then a second one, it's locked out. But if you get them pressed at the same time, yes, you can have more than one relay come on. Um, now this latching thing, you'd think, wouldn't you, that there'd be a pin on the chip that would say high for latching, low for momentary or something like that. No, you have to actually get a whole new chip with a different functionality. So you can see that the chip um, that's on my board currently is a PT2272, so it's a Princeton Tech one. M6 and M means momentary and 6 means that it's got 6 uh, data outputs so that we can uh, control six relays, but that won't latch. If I want to latch, I need an L6. And that's what my new chip is. So I'm going to take out the momentary action chip that's in my receiver and put in the latching chip. So I'm going to use this chip puller for that. I've always felt, and I don't know whether you agree with me on this, that these chip pullers are not made right. You have the little hook at the bottom, but I think you need another hook that sits on top of the chip because there's nothing to sort of pull against or push against. So when you're pulling this out, what happens is it tends to suddenly go and then you bend all the pins at one end of the chip. What you really want is the ability to reference it to something and you can't do that. And I never find these things very satisfying. I always actually end up resorting to a screwdriver. Okay, let's do that now because you can just be much more measured in how you lift the chip. The idea of this, I suppose, is that you can lift both ends simultaneously, but then it's just gonna fly out suddenly. It just doesn't work. So let's get this chip out of its socket. I'll do that. 
Right, now let's put in the uh, L6 chip, which has the latching action. This is a CMOS chip, so I suppose I ought to be concerned about static, but um, I don't know whether it's got protection diodes in it or not. Oh, it's a bit of a splay on that. I might just bend that in a bit because it's not fitting in that leaf socket very well. And I don't want one of the pins to sit on the outside of the leaf. Let's try that again. Okay, that's gone in. Now we should have a latching action. Let's give that a try. Plug the power in and see if it latches. Oh, yes. And then you can replace any uh, on channel with another channel and it latches. Can you do two? Yes, you can. The only thing is, how do you switch a channel off? I'm sure I worked out a way of doing this, but I can't remember what it is. I'll have a play with that for a bit. So no, I can't find any way to reset all the relays other than removing the power, which does it. You can have all the relays or at least all the outputs of the chip off like that, but there's no way to do it once one of them is on. You can certainly turn them all on. I mean, I've had all six of them on, but I can't turn all six of them off. And that's not ideal if you've got um, relays on here, because even if you don't connect anything to one of the relays, the relay itself is still going to use uh, a reasonable amount of power. So what to do? Now there is a, a third type of action um, which you can get some of these chips in, which is the T action. It's a toggle. So you would press it once to switch it on, press it again to switch it off. Of course, the latching action chip doesn't do that. It just stays on. But I've never seen the T in a six channel format. I've only seen it in uh, four channel and I think two channel. So um, you can't get a toggle action for this six channel unit. Well, now one way I could do this is I could sacrifice one channel and have this as a five channel. And uh, when you want to switch it off, you just go to the sixth channel and have that disconnected from the relay. Now, the easiest way to do that on here would be simply to lift one of these pins out of the socket. Let's give that a try. Uh, so there it is, pin lifted out of the socket. It's really quite horrible. Let's see if it works. Plug the power in. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five doesn't do anything. So that's the pin I've lifted out and six does. So five releases any other channels that are on. If I switch several channels on, it releases all of those, but it can't drive a relay because the output pin isn't connected through to that relay. So that should be in a low power state. Now I've wired these little um, daisy chain power links in a rather odd way. I've connected um, positive, now which one's positive? Yeah, positive is on that outer side, to all the norm normally closed connections and then uh, negative to all the normally open connections. So it's a good thing these relays break before they make because if they made before they broke, um, it would short out the power supply. So the, the center, the moving uh, actuator, flips between the positive side and the negative side, um, but leaving a gap between the two so it doesn't short out the power. Now I was just wondering, if I connected the main power in through the normally closed uh, or the normally closed here actually is the positive. So if I put positive into this unit through this central connection, um, it would be on when all the relays are in their default state. But as soon as I turned on this channel, which I think is channel four, yeah, it's channel four, five is currently the channel that doesn't do anything courtesy of the bent pin, um, then it should initially power the unit up. But as soon as I switch on channel four, the relay will pull in, disconnect power to the unit, drop back and if that's enough of a power cut uh, in terms of time that would effectively do the equivalent of taking the power off 
putting the power back on and that should reset the unit so that none of the outputs is on even without the bent pin trick. Ooh, is this going to work? Let's give it a try. Now one thing I will have to do if I use this end relay here, if um, positive is fed into D there, then in its relaxed state it connects through to B. I don't know what these D, B and K are. Um, uh, and that will power the unit. When this energizes it will then connect positive to negative and short out the incoming supply. So I'm going to have to lift this wire as well. Yeah, let's do that. Right, so first things first, let's lift this um, negative, which goes to the last relay. Let's take that off. Okay, let's just bend that round so that we know that's disconnected. Um, and now positive needs to not go into um, here, it needs to go in via D1. I think this is right. Right, we've got a positive, which is the blue wire, now goes into the middle of this last relay, which is channel 4. Oh, uh, what's going to happen? Okay, so no huge explosion when I switch on. So let's try one, two. So it works by virtue of the fact that this relay is in its relaxed state and thus feeding power into the unit. Three, now when I get to four, Oh, no, that's no good. Five. Ah, I haven't um, bent that pin back in. Let's do that. But yes, this is not working, is it? Because I suppose this chip has power from this regulator and capacitor. And crucially, this chip stays active for long enough because of the reservoir in this capacitor that this relay pulling in and breaking the circuit and then flipping back and making the circuit again just turns this into a buzzer. Oh, well, that didn't work. Right, I've reattached uh, the pin for channel five. So that works. One, two, three, five, six. But four. <laughs> no, that was a complete fail. So let's solder this um, wire back onto there like I had it before and put the sixth uh, light bulb back in uh, because that didn't work. And uh, there we are back to uh, a unit which you can turn all six of the channels on, including all at the same time, but you can't turn them all off. Maybe I will look out for a T6 type chip, which would be toggle function six channels, but I've never seen one We'll have a look. Now I've just found a couple of these uh, SC2272-T4s. So these are only four channel but they are the toggle type. So I've put one in here. Now it does mean that um, two of what would be outputs on the uh, L6 or the M6 are now inputs um, but I don't think the circuitry that this chip is driving which is a bunch of NPN transistors is going to feed back as anything other than floating so um, it seems to work fine. Now I can go channel one, turn on and then turn off. So it's toggle on off, one on, two on, one off, two off, three and four of course work, five and six of course don't because on this chip they're not outputs, they're inputs. Uh, so that's the third way I can use this, uh, just use it as a four channel and have toggling um, four channels, five and six, don't do anything. Maybe I'll do that. And uh, next up is this one. It says auto part 71 pence. Well, it was a lot more than that. Let's have a look at the auto part in there. Oh, wow. These are absolutely enormous. <laughs> um, what have I bought? Well, these are car battery terminals. Um, they're just really enormous blocks of metal with, well, this plastic cover, which I suppose could keep the rain off, but um, probably won't stop these rusting if indeed they do rust. I don't really know what these are made of. There was, I think, a choice of 
silver or gold color but that may just be um, some plating I honestly don't know and they were expensive so I'm not quite sure what I was thinking I know what one thing I was thinking I was thinking could I get lucky and that hole there be four millimeters and take a banana plug because I quite like plugging banana plugs directly into my battery terminals but I think they might be a little oversized let's give that a try right I want to take all these grub screws out but every single one is a different size which is a really quite interesting um, that appears to be no uh, that's a six 5.5 no 5 millimeters yeah that's a 5 millimeter that's smaller but I haven't got a 4 that's missing what are these uh, let's try a 3 uh, oh yes that appears to be a 3 that I think is also a 3 but what's really interesting about these two is that this one actually clamps the bottom hole but set way back so the bottom hole is deeper and this grub screw clamps the wire in the top hole but it's much nearer the front it's a really strange arrangement but then I suppose how else could they have done it yeah that's really weird right so now that I've got all the uh, different size grub screws out banana plug four mil in there oh no that's a total fail that what does it fit in there no that's also a total fail total fail that's not compatible with a four mil banana plug that's a shame that's what I was really hoping for now the clamp that tightens um, around well this thing that goes around the lead post is another uh, allen key and it's another size yet again that one appears to be a six mil it is a six mil I'm not quite sure what the uh, across flats size of that is but yeah you need a complete set of allen keys uh, with this because that's a five that's a four these two are threes and they're both different lengths because of course one has to go deep down to capture the wire in the bottom socket and the other one is much shallower to catch the wire in the top socket but this certainly takes some very large diameter cable mm. Now, what's this made of? Is it just steel? Well, no, because my magnets don't attach to that at all. They do attach to um, that bolt. They do attach to that nut. They also, uh, it picks up all of these grubs. So all of those are ferrous, but the block itself isn't, which is interesting. So are these brass, do we think? They're fairly solid and that does look like there's this sort of coppery coloured um, corrosion just starting to take place inside there but it's uh, definitely plated with something as are these but then these are uh, steel presumably because the magnet picks all of them up including that washer the nut and all of the grubs yeah they're all steel so what's going to rust and what's going to corrode <laughs> it'll be interesting to find out and so these are today's items, the big battery terminals and these integrated circuits. Cheerio!